Thank you very much. My name is Ted Nash, and this is the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. <laughs> jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's such an honor and a privilege to be able to write music for this great band and be intimately involved with the, the process, knowing them so well and be able to write music for these people that I know so well how they play. Um, this uh, music uh, is, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna talk during the, uh, the actual set, but I just wanna say a couple things about, first of all, so happy to have Mr. Charles S. Dutton here to read excerpts from these wonderful speeches. And one of the pieces, is from Mandela, and I found out last night that Mr. Dutton, Rock, as he's also affectionately known, was at Mandela's inauguration and at his funeral, so he has a very special attachment to Mr. Mandela. Um, the music, with the exception of one movement, all the music from this uh, first half, this concert, this suite, is all the melodies, all the, the notes and things are derived from the actual speeches. In other words, I transcribed the pitches, the intonation of the speeches, and then put them in context of a big band. And uh, so just keep that in mind because if you don't like the melodies, I actually didn't write them. <laughs> There's one exception and that's Aung San Suu Kyi whose uh, speech was actually not a public speech but was an essay. But it was just so beautiful I wanted to include it. So uh, we're gonna get started now. This is, the, uh, this is the presidential suite. Thank you very much. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, first inaugural address, January 20th, 1961. So let us begin anew, remembering on both sides that civility is not a sign of weakness, and sincerity is always subject to proof. Let us never negotiate out of fear, but let us never fear to negotiate. Together, let us explore the stars, conquer the deserts, eradicate disease, tap the ocean depths, and encourage the arts and commerce. Let both sides unite to heed in all corners of the earth the command of Isaiah to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free. And if a beachhead of cooperation may push back the jungle of suspicion, let both sides join in creating a new endeavor, not a new balance of power, 
but a new world of law where the strong is just and the weak secure and the peace preserved. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man.
Walter, Walter Blanding on the tenor saxophone. Greg Gisbert on the trumpet. Thank you. Yawahala Nehru, Indian Constituent Assembly, New Delhi, India, August 14th, 1947. Long years ago, we made a tryst with destiny. And now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge, not wholly or in full measure, but very substantially. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. A moment comes, which comes but rarely in history, when we step out from the old to the new, when an age ends and when the soul of a nation long suppressed finds utterance. The appointed day has come, the day appointed by destiny, and India stands forth again after long slumber and struggle, awake, vital, free, and independent. The past clings on to us still in some measure, and we have much to do before we redeem the pledges we have so often taken. Yet the turning point is past, and history begins anew for us. The history which we shall live and act and others will write about. It is a fateful moment for us in India, for all Asia and the world. A new star rises, the star of freedom in the East. A new hope comes into being, a vision long cherished materializes. May the star never set and the hope never be betrayed.
Sir Winston Churchill, House of Commons, June 4th, 1940. The Knights of the Round Table, the Crusaders, all fact fall back into the past. Not only distant, but prosaic. These young men going forth every morn to guard their native land and all that we stand for holding in their hands these instruments of colossal and shattering power, of whom it may be said that every morn brought forth a noble chance, and every chance brought forth a noble knight, deserve our gratitude, as do all the brave men who, in so many ways and on so many occasions, are ready and continue ready to give life and all for their native land. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. And if, which I do not believe for a moment, this island on large part of it was subjugated and starving, then our empire beyond the seas, armed and guarded by the British fleet, would carry on the struggle until in God's good time, the new world with all its power and might steps forth to rescue and liberation of the old.
Franklin Delano Roosevelt, State of the Union Address, January 6, 1941. We look forward to a world founded upon four essential human freedoms. The first is freedom of speech and expression everywhere in the world. The second is freedom of every person to worship God in his own way everywhere in the world. The third is freedom from want which translated into world terms means economic understandings which will secure to every nation a healthy peacetime life for its inhabitants everywhere in the world. The fourth is freedom from fear which translated into world terms means a worldwide reduction of armaments to such a point and in such a thorough fashion that no nation will be in a position to commit an act of physical aggression against any neighbor anywhere in the world. This nation has placed its destiny in the hands and heads and hearts of its millions of free men and women and its faith in freedom under the guidance of God. Freedom means the supremacy of human rights everywhere. Our support goes to those who struggle to gain those rights and keep them. Our strength is our unity of purpose. To that high concept, there can be no end save victory.
Thank you. That was Dan Nimmer on the piano. Dan Nimmer. 
Katie Rampton on the trumpet. Vincent Gardner on the trombone. Sherman Irby on the alto saxophone. Papito Carlos Enriquez on the bass. Essay, Freedom from Fear, 1990. It is not power that corrupts, but fear. Fear of losing power corrupts those who wield it. And fear of the scourge of power corrupts those who are subject to it. With so close a relationship between fear and corruption, it is little wonder that in any society where fear is rife, corruption in all its forms becomes deeply entrenched. The quintessential revolution is that of the spirit born of an intellectual conviction of the need for change in those mental attitudes and values which shape the course of a nation's development. Fearlessness may be a gift, but perhaps more precious is the courage acquired through endeavor, courage that comes from cultivating the habit of refusing to let fear dictate one's actions, courage that could be described as grace under pressure, grace which is renewed repeatedly in the face of harsh, unremitting pressure. At the root of human responsibility is the concept of perfection. The urge to achieve it, the intelligence to find a path towards it, and the will to follow that path, if not to the end, at least the distance needed to rise above individual limitations and environmental impediments. It is man's vision of a world fit for rational, civilized humanity which leads him to dare and to suffer to build societies free from want and fear.
Thank you. That was Dan Nimmer on the piano. Dan Nimmer. Ronald Wilson Reagan, Brandenburg Gate near the Berlin Wall on June 12th, 1987. Today I say, as long as this gate is closed, as long as this scar of a wall is permitted to stand, it is not the German question alone that remains open, but the question of freedom for all mankind. Yet I do not come here to lament. For well, I find in Berlin a message of hope, even in the shadow of this wall, a message of triumph. After these four decades, then, there stands before the entire world one great and inescapable conclusion. Freedom leads to prosperity. Freedom replaces the ancient hatreds among the nations with comity and peace. Freedom is the victor. General Secretary Gorbachev, if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Today thus represents a moment of hope. We in the West stand ready to cooperate with the East to promote true openness, to break down barriers that separate people, to create a safe, freer world. And surely, there is no better place than Berlin, the meeting place of East and West, to make a start.
Marcus Pridup on the trumpet. Marcus Pridup. Charles Dutton. Rock. Lyndon Baines Johnson, special message to the Congress, March 15th, 1965. I speak tonight for the dignity of man and the destiny of democracy. I urge every member of both parties, Americans of all religions and of all colors from every section of this country to join me in that cause. Our mission is at once the oldest and the most basic of this country to right wrong, to do justice, to serve man. For with a country as with a person, what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? There is no Negro problem. There is no southern problem. There is no northern problem. There is only an American problem. We are met here tonight as Americans, not as Democrats or Republicans. We are met here as Americans to solve that problem. There is no constitutional issue here. The command of the Constitution is plain. There is no moral issue. It is wrong, deadly wrong, to deny any of your fellow Americans to the right to vote in this country. There is no issue of states' rights or national rights. There is only the struggle for human rights. The ca their cause must be our cause too. Because it is not just Negroes, but really it is all of us who must overcome the crippling legacy of bigotry and injustice. And then we shall overcome.
Mason on the trombone. Elliot Mason. Ali Jackson on the drums. Thank you. Nelson Mandela, inaugural speech, Pretoria, South Africa, May 10th, 1994. To my compatriots, I have no hesitation in saying that each one of us is as intimately attached to the soil of this beautiful country as are the famous jacaranda trees of Pretoria and the mimosa trees of the Bushveld. Each time one of us touches the soil of this land, we feel a sense of personal renewal. The national mood changes as the seasons change. We are moved by a sense of joy and exhilaration when the grass turns green and the flowers bloom. The time for the healing of the wounds has come. The moment to bridge the chasms that divide us has come. The time to build is upon us. Let there be justice for all. Let there be peace for all. Let there be work, bread, water, and salt for all. Let each know that for each, the body, the mind, and the soul have been freed to fulfill themselves. Never, never, and never again shall it be that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression of one by another and suffer the indignity of being the skunk of the world. The sun shall never set on so glorious a human achievement. Let freedom reign. God bless Africa. in saying that each one of us is as intimately attached to the soil of this beautiful country as are the famous jacaranda trees of Pretoria and the mimosa trees of the bush bell.
one of us touches the soil of this land, we feel a sense of personal renewal. The national mood changes as the seasons change. We are moved by a sense of joy and exhilaration. When the grass turns green and the flowers bloom, come. The time for the healing of the wounds has come. The moment to bridge the chasms that divides us has come. The time to build is upon us. Free to fulfill themselves. 